Uh, welcome to day three of ApacheCon and the Finnerac track. I'm wearing Javier's shoes for a little bit in the morning and introducing this session. So we've got a number of good panels and talks today, so try to stay on for the whole day. But it's my pleasure to introduce to you three members of the Molnar's team, Saranj Sharma, Hatarva Dekne, and Advait Madakar. And so I know personally Saranj for a number of years, and he's been an active member of the Finnerac community and really starting to bring some of the talented services and innovation he's built into the upstream code base in the near future. So looking forward to that. But today, you know, his team and himself, they're gonna focus on a topic around security that's come up fairly often at ApacheCon. And I think Bitcoin's also been coming up fairly often. So nicely tying the two together, uh, speaking about BitRupee and passwordless authentication. So I'll let you all more properly introduce yourselves, but looking forward to your talk today and let you guys take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Uh, greetings, everyone. Welcome to our talk, courtesy of Wilderness Foundation, Denmark, and the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, our talk is titled Bit2P Passwordless Authentication Using ZKP Bitcoin Protocol. Right, about the speakers. Our first, first presenter is Mr. Saran Sharma. Saranj is a researcher at Mulnars as well as its uh, non-profit arm, Mulnars Foundation. Uh, he's a committer at Apache Finnerac and is involved with the fintech and Bitcoin domain. Saranj joins us right now from Himachal Pradesh, India. So he, he, he's living in a hilly region. Uh, he might have some intermittent network issues, so please uh, don't mind regarding that. I'm Atharva Dekne, a research and development fellow at Mulnars Foundation. Uh, I'm an op open source enthusiast and I'm currently a committer and technical writer at uh, wordpress.org as well. I'm completing my final year of uh, undergraduate studies in com computer engineering at the University of Pune. And I also dabble a little bit in sound design and music technology. Finally, we have Advait Madekar. Advait is also a research fellow at Mulnas Foundation. He's also completing his final year of undergraduate studies in mechanical engineering at the University of Pune. Both Advait and I are joining from Pune, India. Right, so the synopsis. I'll go, go over the abstract br briefly. Uh, there are numerous vulnerabilities that are caused because of traditional password-based uh, authentication. Uh, passwords make us users vulnerable to phishing, data theft, uh, attacks, and much more. So financial applications such, such as Finneract rely on password-based authentication for uh, secure transactions. The existing approach uh, relies on a plain te text transfer of transactions over HTTPS. So this could lead to pot potential security risk for all the parties concerned. Therefore, there's a need to replace this worn out protocol and make way for, for something new. You guys can uh, have a look at the first part of the synopsis, abstract rather. Okay, so this called for developing a fast yet lightweight user authentication model using a Bitcoin identity protocol and zero knowledge proof. So BitRoop is a secure uh, passwordless authentication protocol that asks the client to sign each request using a private key. And the server checks to make sure that the signature is valid and it matches the public key. So we'll discuss about the current state of authentication protocols, the technology stack and more. You can have a look at the second part of that abstract for a bit. All right, let's go over the current state of authentication protocols. So first of all, character-based authentication protocols have increasingly become predictable and password, passwords are only as strong as the user can think of. Uh, moreover, most people use the same password for various sites as it, as it becomes easier to remember. Uh, offenders can use brute force, injection attacks, replay attacks, and phishing to acquire the password nonetheless. So even if it isn't their fault, they can get the passwords. Uh, users are prone to identity, identity theft and impersonation even, even if it isn't their fault. Uh, all of this is very expensive. Maintaining the login credentials on the server 
and using encryption to secure it is immensely expensive so not all all the organizations prefer to implement it uh, two factor authentication is not the best in terms of being robust uh, attackers can use sim swapping they can gain access to emails and what not so it it isn't the best in terms of authentication as a as a extra layer it is good then the authenticity of the token provided by the service can be can't be proven by the client so there are existing security vulnerabilities in addition to that uh, such as oa2 having removed signatures and also in funrax case a simple plain text transfer and uh, base64 encoding is used right so what are the advantages of passwordless authentication so first of all of course it is passwordless so the user logs in using the same look and feel as they used to you know so the attacks uh, attacks asso associated with middlemen are out of the question uh, this type of authentication is is based on the bitcoin framework uh, with the growing pop popularity of bitcoin there is an abundance of libraries uh, written in multiple languages then crypt cryptography is durable and secure no denying that then as the private key is never revealed to the server the exchange between the keys is not possible the authentication being decentralized uh, the private keys are not stored stored anywhere on the server and even if the server is compromised the user uh, credentials remain safe okay so an offender cannot impersonate someone with a stolen identity since the server itself uh, doesn't have the client info and this is actually es essential for the privacy of the user next encrypted information can't be sent to a designated can be sent to a designated party rather using the existing public key uh, for example a loan transaction can be shared with a cre credit uh, agency right these are the advantages of passwordless authentication that we we are hoping all of these would be incorporated in b2p now let's move on to the technology stack uh, advait and saranch will discuss more about the technology stack for b2p uh, thank Adway. you atharva uh, thank you atharva uh, thank you thank you atharva hello everyone i am advait madekar uh, now I'll be starting by introducing what is zero knowledge proof. Uh, zero knowledge proof is a method by which one party can prove to another party that they know certain value X without, without conveying any information apart from the uh, fact that they know the value of X. It uh, allows use cases such as uh, custom identification, that is KYC, data sharing across uh, integrators, service uh, communication between APIs, loan transaction sharing uh, now uh, here is our approach with zkp can next slide please uh, here uh, the client manages uh, all private keys uh, and only the assign uh, that is uh, system identification number is sent to the server side at the pinrack end random challenges and security checks are done which happen at browser and client side the browser acts as an intermediary by managing the graphs and sends it to Finerac. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, another pro uh, protocol we would be using is the Bitcoin Identity Protocol. Uh, Bitcoin works on generating private and public keys using a sign, that is system identification number. This sign can be used by users to prove identity on the server side. Bitcoin currently uses ECC, that is SECPK256. It adds the data to the public key and the other parties can just sim can uh, just simply verify the message. Both technology stacks are combined and are to be integrated with Finerac on the auth level for data encryption. Now I would like to request Saranj to further expand on this and explain it, its implementation in Finerac. Over to you, Saranj. Hey, thank you very much. Um, so, hang on. 
Um, so we could start with the idea that Finderact uses, I mean, definitely the Finderact community. Saranj, uh, you're having network issues. Just for the for the delay, he is living in a hilly area. The if you might know the Himachal Himalayas rather. The, there's intermittent uh, network issues uh, where he lives. So just a sec, daily joints. Hey guys, could you, can you hear me now? Yeah, all good. Perfect. It's okay. So as I was mentioning, the fact that Finrac uses right now basic uh, which is kind of like using a randomized time-based uh, base64 encoding. And if you're using an OAuth technology or OAuth protocol or OAuth-based authentication, so then you are basically using the UID and the, the mode of the passwords is kind of like, you know, based on the uh, different based of different encryption schemes. Um, and if the password is, you know, like for instance, the major problem here is the password is stolen, then anybody can actually access your protected resources. Definitely the REST API is also at the same time. And if the server hosting uh, the database for Finract is kind of like compromised, then you have like a lot of issues going on. This is kind of like a problem statement, which where we started technically. And the most important issue here is that a couple of these technologies do not have, uh, like for instance, OAuth uh, itself lacks a very important feature of signature derivation, which makes it vulnerable to different kind of attack vectors. Um, the important segment here is that the password is transmitted over uh, the plain text over HTTPS. Um, so you essentially like, you know, the client is simply sending a plain text password. So if somebody's into middle, could simply just derive the password and use all those things. Um, and it opens opens and leaves the vulnerability. So the same techniques are kind of like, um, can be implemented to encrypt the, and you know, sort of, if we, and if if this adversarial is, attack is found in the future. Uh, Finrac currently uses two-factor authentication also, which fails if the attacker gets the, you know, he, he gets the access to the email in case of social hacking, you know. So there are a bunch of problems which we are, we are trying to solve. Uh, uh, the major problem here is that we're trying to solve is the data privacy, uh, which um, they, which is a, which is a.
discussed are you guys uh, is it okay so i could see some things going on with the screen so uh, are you guys there you might you might uh, turn off your video uh, okay yeah why not okay is it possible is it good okay yeah so this is something which which gets created or which gets kind of like used as a framework on the client side so imagine a client side could simply just produce all these clients uh, and could simply have to store all of these information in their own preferred way there is no hard code method there um so these primary functions are getting used or the methods are getting used on the client side so client side could be like you know user user interface or your uh, you know your uh, you know um your uh, service which is kind of interacting with the rest apis um server side library uh, you know are basically packaged bitcoin so we're actually using base 58 encoding from bitcoin j not really the whole bitcoin need right now and uh twenty is recently incubated by apache donated by consensus one of the blockchain based uh, uh system developers they recently donated it to apache and apache incubated and it contains um specific methods related to our uh, you know implementation here in apache finrack so uh, on the apache finrack then the server you know a couple of methods like receiving the response and extracting the information from those public keys as part of the essential um so moving on to the next part of the uh, slide um uh, which the user flow so i would like to go through the user flow it's pretty straightforward we did not uh want to change the existing user flow that how the user is going to uh, log in i mean we want to give them the same look and feel and it does have existing look and feel uh right now we're trying it on our end just to by hitting the apis so essentially the user flow works in a very simple way so when a uh, super user is automatically loaded on the first instance of the let's say you're firing up an instance of finrack so this is what our primary goal is an automatic sin will be generated could you know get loaded into the database and these private and public keys would be sent out on the email to for the admin so once the admin gets the access and they have to pro manually provide the uh, the identity keys and the signature so they so that they could be able to access the protected resources and once that is done they could create and go they could go ahead and create uh, users and those users could have those uh, you know those private keys and public keys sent out on their email and the sin automatic generation happens from there so essentially the first user need to have this manual process so so you know when you go through this user flow you realize that it's pretty much similar and a bunch of things are happening in the background so every user has to have this but eventually a user has to have this access uh in the near future we are we're we're kind of like figuring out ways like uh or say to say that in the near future people you know uh, users could actually use their wallets or specific kind of you know like probably add on two factor authentication which could just simply show up a barcode and when you scan that barcode it automatically does everything for you so if zkp is optional we don't really go into the zkp part but if zkp is not an optional component here so zkp essentially is zero knowledge proof based authentication happening so it's a second level or layer of um, security added to this specific component which we kind of like derived when we set out of create creating this uh, uh, authentication protocol we realized that zkp could actually unleash and create a pandora box which could open a bunch of new things which are not uh, kind of like available directly in finrack and could actually we could actually leverage both of these technology combined to create a sophisticated level of encryption within finrack or protected resources and an interchange of data when happens so 
when adding ZKP, we we kind of like use this uh, with the existing identity protocol or the identity signatures which we derived in the previous slides which I've mentioned. And so when you sign this message, say for an example, you want to sign a message and then you say that, hey, I have a bunch of loan information and server wants to sort of like verify it on the server end. So when it does the verification, it bas basically sends an interactive challenge to the to the prover. And once it gets verified, the user or the service gets access to this information. And this all happens without revealing the true information. You know, so that's that's a breakthrough here, which we are trying to uh, create uh, here for Finrite. So it's kind of like, a, um, uh, you know, encryption inbuilt with Finract uh, happening for the first time. So we, we are trying out this implementation on, on, a, on a current basis. We've yet not submitted the PRs because we feel that we would like to go for a complete integration test because when you deal with such kind of sophisticated cryptographic stuff, you need to, you know, set out and set up on uh, different levels of testing not just integration testing because we're not dealing with um, you know loan data or some simple stuff we're dealing with a couple of uh, encryption and you know methods here and a couple of pro protocol level stuff so uh, there's a link you guys could go there so uh, moving on to the technical notes um, thank you Asa, for uh, taking care of all of this um, server side implementation is essential for verifying sin by sort of like deriving it from public key. So this allows us to, in, you know, encompass different dimensions of storage of data in, into, you know, when you send out information from client side to the use to the server side, uh, maintaining a user association. This is something which, uh, which we have to yet finish and work on. Like for instance, the, there is no concept of password. Uh, remains here in, in this on the server side. So user association with like a, a user could could or should be able to manage multiple public keys, a multiple SIN. SIN could be like, you know, their hardware, their devices. Like for instance, I want to access it from my iPad. I want to access it from my mobile phone. So I could do that. And that requires us to prove ourselves. And that in that basis, we have to generate Uh, started out developing this feature, like for instance, to impl implementing a two filter, which sort of like maintains and check validations across filters uh, for the verification of the sin, which happens with the signatures is happen. Um, client is going to store all of this information, you know, a uh, bunch of stuffs which we've mentioned. Um, uh, one important stuff here that we could actually use decentralized blockchain is an option if some parties or some. Uh, partners would like to integrate and when they see that they would want to use rather than storing all of this information uh, onto the server they could simply more decent um, on the browser morphic graphs which reduces the complications of the We we're going to implement all of this and how we have actually implemented all of this. Um, moving on to the next slide. So there are a couple of drawbacks uh, for this. which we wanted to distribute or which we wanted to spread out in the community also because more the people have information, we could find a couple of solutions also. Like for instance, we have this computational complexity. We're not really running away from this. We have this because on the server side, encryption is a big task. You know, like de deriving information from public key, deriving information or deriving data out of it, you know. Um, client end processing is also good because several to support such kind of client uh, but the other open source pro projects are kind of like taking care of it, but we have to be aware of these uh, drawbacks when we use this um, definitely this is not this only secure method but this is the best secure method which we could kind of like test out and you know, set upon in the for the future uh, move, yeah thank you sir so future improvements and functionalities which we see that could be used right now in the future. 
so authentication is taken care of with this protocol certain i mean this is done we've implemented almost the functionality um data encryption with this func- feature we could actually use uh, so for an example uh, finrack has this user interface which could simply right now is sending a plain text uh, you know based uh, information so it could actually send some sensitive information in in encrypted way because essentially you could package everything into a small hexadecimal string which could get derived out there and be the server side and nobody would get to know even on on the on the level of zkp for an instance you could actually send some information secret information where the even the uh, the verifier wouldn't even get to know so such level of encryption could be utilized with the existing technology which we are imp- implementing um identity and reputation as system is is something which we are looking forward for with using this technology because this technology simply allows kyc people to have kyc done on the client end without actually revealing such sensitive information um we would like to see if community would like to integrate different kind of cryptographic schemes to it the bunch of uh, cryptographic schemes out there um you know uh, accessing data yeah so such uh, such kind of functionalities could be implemented um and the most important uh, functionality which i would like to personally see is encryption of data happening on the on the rest apis without actually revealing any information um so think about like you know credit bureau asking for your uh, you know your simply them to use or encryption methods um so moving on to the next uh,